have to hold this in. Go. <laughs> you happy, Frank? Oh, yes. All right. All right. What? What? There's too many of you. I'm trying to start the oh, long start. Do it yourself. Thank you. That's very nice of you. One of the most popular uh, panels at any HOPE conference is uh, social engineering. Some of the funniest phone calls I've ever heard in my life were done in this room uh, on this panel. Social engineering isn't just uh, phone calls. There's all sorts of exploits you can do. You'd be amazed how many concerts you could get into just by holding a clipboard, having a walkie-talkie, and looking really annoyed at anybody that talks to you. Why are you um, giving away my secrets? How many times? I, I even got into a corn concert that way, and I don't even like corn. Um, <laughs> But uh, we know that things are a little behind tonight. The 10 p.m. Uh, Ingressia talk, XSS, XSS MITM attacks, will start after Kevin Mitnick's discussion. So uh, without further ado, this is social engineering. Welcome. Are we all having fun? Good. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the most fun panel, I think. Uh, we, we've had it since the first Hope in 1994, and we just kind of, we share stories, we try to make some phone calls, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But mostly I think we educate people as to how easy it is to get information that we're really not supposed to have, and that's sort of what makes it so much fun in the first place. Um, I'd like to um, introduce people, maybe um, the person responsible for that photograph can talk first. Oh, hi, I'm Bernie S. How did you get the photo? And uh, welcome to the land of make-believe. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah, New Jersey, well, no. This is the Hope Police, the Hope, the Hope Barracks. And uh, I was in the New Jersey, New Jersey Turnpike a couple of weeks ago, and I passed that sign, and I had to get, pass those signs, and I had to get a picture of this. So further on down the road, you can see where that green sign is. I pulled off the turnpike, and, um, got out with my camera, and then moments later, two New Jersey State troopers pulled up behind me and wanted to know what I was doing. I was well off the road in a grassy area, but uh, I uh, had to make up a, I had to give them a quick story, because I knew that pulling over there probably was a finable offense, and I didn't want a, uh, an uncomfortable police situation. So I said, a really important piece of paper blew out of my window, and it blew back behind where this, this blue and brown sign was. And I really need to find that because uh, well, I wanted the reasons why I had to find it. In any case, they're like, well, we'll help you find it then. <laughs> so I thought, well, I might as well take advantage of this and get them to go up by the sign so I can take a picture of them with them in it. <laughs> and uh, you can see them there. So there's two New Jersey State, New Jersey State troopers uh, in the land of make-believe from the Hope Barracks. And, uh, the social engineering here was in getting them to not find me and to get them in this photo. So I didn't have to get any information from them, but it's another example of social engineering. And remember this, the police are your friends. They will do all sorts of things for you if they believe you have the authority uh, to, to have them help you. It's, it's really kind of a cool thing. We have um, one of the greatest social engineering, engineering tools downstairs. You guys know what it is? Anybody want to guess? Sorry? No? I'll give you a hint. It's outside. Yes, the van. That van is the biggest social engineering tool I've ever seen because when people see the phone company van, they just assume you've got authority. And what's really cool, I, I talked about this on the radio this week, um, even though that this thing was painted in 1994 and it has the old gold, white, and, uh, and blue uh, bell stripes, Verizon is now you know, they're this ugly color, they're, they're red, black, and white. Their trucks have not looked anything like that in years, yet they still wave at this truck when it goes by as if it's one of them. 
and I can still pull into any phone company garage or, or fenced in area and they will open it. I guess they're thinking that, wow, that's a long service call, <laughs> you're finally coming home. <laughs> But I think, I think the most fun I had was when I was moving a friend of mine a few weeks ago, and I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there was a, there was a crane collapse in New York City a, a month or two ago. And whenever you see a crane up in the air in New York City, eventually it's going to collapse. And this one collapsed literally the day before I was going to move my friend. So the whole street was closed off, and nobody could go up or down the thing. It was, it was packed full of cops, literally 100 cops just standing around. They didn't even know what they were supposed to be doing. They just knew that the street was closed. Well. I had to move my friend. I had the van, and that's what the 2600 van is mostly used for, is moving my friends. <laughs> and so I'm going down 2nd Avenue, and, and the street uh, is a one-way street going west. And since 1st Avenue was closed, I couldn't approach it that way, so I had to approach it the wrong way. I was going down 2nd Avenue. I had to make a left turn into a one-way street going the wrong way. And this was barricaded by cops. I figured I was going to get yelled at immediately for going, not only going down a closed street, but going the wrong way into a closed street. But the most amazing thing happened. The cop just moved away and opened the barricade. <laughs> I'm like, shit, this is amazing. What could I get away with here? It got better because I had to back the van uh, to my friend's apartment. And there was a whole bunch of cops just standing there. They were smoking cigarettes, talking on the cell phone, just like, you know, they didn't have anything to do. So we were just all hanging out. And this was sort of... I guess it was payback for RNC because I backed the van, I, I didn't back it into the cops fast, I backed it really, really slowly, like one mile an hour, and they dispersed. <laughs> I got a group of cops to disperse, how cool is that? So, so the 2600 van can be used for incredible acts of social engineering and getting people to move who would never move for you normally is I think one way of doing that and, and apparently the none of those police officers could read because it clearly says the hacker no, quarterly no. on it they were all very nice but they just didn't seem like cops then because they're all hanging around not knowing what to do and they weren't in hostile mode because there were no demonstrators but anyway so that's that's one story uh, we will tell you many more uh, not Kevin is here oh hello for the few of you out there who actually listened off the hook, I'm not Kevin, you might recognize me. And um, you, will. You, will. you uh, also might remember me from last year's, or last conference social engineering panel where I told the wonderful story about the Michigan elevator. No, I guess no one remembers that. <laughs> All right. Um, hello, uh, I'm Lurid, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it's awesome there. Yeah! Come on! Anyway, uh, <laughs> I've... Uh, That's why Dayton's in Ohio. <laughs> thanks. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I am excited to tell stories. Hi, I'm the Rat Man. This is uh, Sid Vicious, the world's only hacker dog. He's really the social engineer. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try to, maybe I'll tell a couple stories about some of his exploits, but he definitely is a good lubricant for any social situation. He works out pretty good. So. Sid is an IRC op, by the way, on our yeah, network. Yeah, he's on 2600.net. He takes care of all the trolls and everything, so. And I'm the Cheshire Catalyst. Thank you. For those of you who don't know why they're applauding, I'm the guy with my own area code. All right, uh, now what? <laughs> We're all looking to you. <laughs> oh, great. Um, this Fearless is always, leader. It's always very stressful because we never know what to do, and uh, it's always a good chance it's not going to work. It, it really shouldn't work, the things we get away with. Well, maybe, maybe we could preface, has anyone done anything social engineering-wise on the telephone recently? Gotten information they weren't supposed to get? Uh, gotten people to help them out? I mean, it's, you always... If you win somebody's sympathy over, they'll tell you all kinds of bits of information. I was, I was listening to something we did at Beyond Hope, where we called a blockbuster video, and we were just talking to a representative there, and I played the part of an angry husband who had, who had gotten really upset at the fact that he had just come home from a holiday, and there was this, um, this late fee waiting for him, and I, I didn't know who was using the card. I, I need to know all the people who are using my card. Well, except the thing is, I don't really know what last name was being used. So I wanted to try this one. All right, it's not that, you know, and we basically just went through all these names. 
And the poor reception, or um, uh, person at the, at the uh, front desk, uh, was just giving me everybody's information, addresses, names, videos that they were renting, it, all because I was exasperated trying to help me out so that I could fix the situation because I was trying to help them out, I was trying to pay this late fee which really didn't exist. But it was an indication of how easy it is to get somebody to tell you something they really shouldn't tell you. Another time we called a Starbucks and uh, we asked them if they were having trouble with their cash register, which of course they were, and uh, we got them to sort of read off the last few transactions because we were afraid it wouldn't go through. And they started reading out credit card numbers. We, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're, we're responsible people here, so we lowered the volume. That didn't get out. We interrupted her. But yeah, people can give out all sorts of information. And you know what? I bet a lot of you give out information you're not supposed to give out. It's a social security number. You probably have given that to the phone company when you don't have to. Or anyone else who asks for it. You know, we were thinking of asking for it ourselves and see how many of you fell for that, but we didn't. Uh, it's, um, it's amazing. As social networking, people just give out all this information about themselves, and that is, that's a boon to anybody who wants to, uh, to find out information they're not supposed to have access to. People put their class schedules online, uh, they have all their, their favorite likes and dislikes and secret desires and things like that. They post them because they want to share it with other people who might feel the same way, but it's really, it's really getting all kinds of information out there that um, added together, it's your life, you know? It's like having a diary always readable by anybody. How many of you have Facebook accounts on this panel? I do. All about me. <laughs> all right, so we're still all looking to me. Nobody has any other stories? Well, I have a story that's Go ahead, tell the story. By, I'll, uh, I'll make a call. I will, but... By uh, your Starbucks story. Go ahead. Another large corporation, I uh, decided to test their security, and I called up one of their stores as a very thankful customer and asked for the manager, and fortunately he was, he was out, so the employee was more than grateful to give me their home address so I can send them a bouquet of flowers to show how grateful I am for their, their service. So I immediately called up another store in a different town and said, hey, I'm the manager from store A. We're having a lot of problems with our credit card machines. We got a customer here who said he was there yesterday. Can you read off his credit card number? Guess what they did? Read it off in full. Of course, I was, you know, nice and I explained to him exactly what I did and how to stop against it. And uh, they threatened to sue me. So. <laughs> All right, well, uh, no, I mean, you know, I, okay, I've got an example that, you know, everybody from Hope, you know, that's ever been here can appreciate. Um, back H2K2, when we had the, you know, credit card size badges with the little SIM cards on them, um, I was walking around New York, it's my first Hope conference, first time I'd ever been in New York, aimlessly walking around, um, I, saw the roped off, I saw a roped off area, so, you know, I started walking up and there's a security guard kind of sleeping and he noticed me walk up. He jumped up real quick, like, huh, huh, and he said, oh, okay, you're cool. And he like grabbed his badge and I didn't realize what he was doing, but he was signaling to me that because I had a badge, I could get on the set of Good Morning America to watch the Counting Crows. So that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, that was really, I mean, you know, everybody can appreciate the Counting Crows aren't that great, but whatever, free concert, you know, New York City. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, how come none of you told me I forgot to introduce somebody on the panel? Kevin Mitnick is also here. You might have heard of him. I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin. He's so polite, he would have sat here the, the entire hour and not said a word to me. And, uh, yeah. Just thought I was blending in. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back here at Hope. Yeah. And uh, Kevin will be giving a talk immediately after this uh, social engineering thing happens. Um, but uh, you've had some social engineering experience, I believe, in the past? Just a little bit. <laughs> I have one with the central office. It was in Hollywood. This was, I don't know, about 10, no, 15 years ago. No, about 20 years ago. It was the Hollywood central office in Los Angeles. And a friend of mine, um, a guy named Stephen Rhodes at the time was also a phone freaker, and we decided we wanted to take a self-guided tour of the central office. So it was around 2.30 in the morning on a Saturday, and we had the door codes to all the different offices in Los Angeles, and we just let ourselves in, and we're roaming around the Hollywood CO, and we're about on the third floor, 
And then all of a sudden, this big guy security guard approaches us and goes, excuse me, yeah, do you have any ID? And I, I go, sure, one moment. And I go into my pocket and I said, oh, I must have left my uh, ID in the car. I'll, I'll go get it, I'll be right back. He goes, no, he goes, who's this guy? And I go, oh, he's just a friend of mine and I want to take him on a tour. He's never seen a central office. He goes, at 2.30 in the morning? I said, yeah, we just got out of a movie and my friend has always wanted to work for the phone company. And so I figured I'd just take him on a quick tour. And he goes, well, where do you work? I said, well, I work in the Cosmos Center in San Diego. He goes, who's your supervisor? And I told him the name of the supervisor. Incidentally, it was the correct name of the person in the San Diego Cosmos Center. And he goes, no, you, have to come, you guys have to come with us. So he escorts us to the elevator. And I know on the ninth floor is the switching control center. And that's where there's people up there because that office is manned. So you end up going, getting escorted up to the ninth floor. And there's about five or six people around, and uh, the security guard's telling him the story. I found these two guys roaming around our building. This guy doesn't have ID. Let's find out what's going on. So one of the other uh, supervisors, not a security guard, he goes, what's your supervisor's name? And I gave it to him. I said, well, listen, you can't wake her up. Because look, it's 2.30 in the morning. If you want, I'll go to my car. We'll go get my ID, and I'll be right back. Of course, I had no plans of coming back. So he says, no, we're calling your supervisor. So he picks up a book, uh, some sort of intercompany directory, and I'm thinking, well, they don't list home telephone numbers in there. But apparently he had found some sort of notes or whatever listing the supervisor's home phone number. So he calls the supervisor, 2.30 in the morning, Saturday. He goes, listen, I found one of your employees, Steve, roaming around one of our offices, and he says he works for you. Uh-huh. Oh, you want to talk to him? Sure. So he hands me the phone, and I go, hey, Sally, how are you? I'm really sorry to, that you were woken up. And I, you know, I normally would never take a friend on a tour of a central office. And she's, as I'm speaking, she's, going, she's saying, who are you? Who are you? And I'm going, yeah, I, and by the way, Tuesday, we'll definitely, we still have that meeting for that report, correct? And she goes, who are you? Who are you? But I'm pressing the phone to my ear. So the other people in the room can't hear what she's saying. He's only listening to my side of the conversation. And I'm like having a calm conversation with her. And I said, listen, OK, um, you know, I'm just going to take my friend around for about 15 more minutes, and we'll leave, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. And I, I, and I went over, and I walked about, well, it was like one or uh, about two steps, and I hung up the phone. And I go, are you satisfied? <laughs> They didn't know what to do. They weren't sure, but I said, listen, you better not call her back. <laughs> I mean, come on, this is a little bit ridiculous. I said, listen, I'm gonna take my friend around for about 15 more minutes and uh, we'll leave. Okay, you guys can go. So they let us go. We make a beeline right for that elevator to get out of that building. Go down the elevator, we go out the street. We go down about three or four blocks so we can watch the front door of the Hollywood CO. I'd say about seven to 10 minutes pass and you see that same security guard bursting out the door, looking down the street. He was looking for us, so we're sitting there kind of laughing at the time. But it was a real scary experience because we thought we were gonna get busted. But um, a little social engineering helped us out of that situation. So there you go. Never underestimate people's stupidity when, when getting information. No, I'm serious. Uh, I, this is something a friend of mine actually did when he was about, I guess, 16 or 17. He, uh, he and a, a couple of other people um, went to a central office um, and basically convinced the guard at the central office that they were there to collect the old IDs because they were going to deliver the new ones. This <laughs> fucking guard gave him his ID card. <laughs> this is how trusting people can be. I got a better one. Remember the days of 8BBS? Anyone yeah, here yeah. from 8BBS days? Well, uh, there was this other hacker on the board named Paul Montgomery and he would lived up in Stockton and we wanted to get the test number directory for Pacific Bell, all the different test numbers. It was actually Pacific Telephone and Telegraph. So I said, okay, are you willing to pick it up if I can get them to leave it outside their door? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, don't worry, watch. And I three-way in the central office, and I actually tell them the same story that we're giving them the new directories, and they have to uh, leave the 
they have to leave the old directories outside the door because we have to shred them. And they did. They left it right outside the door. Unbelievable. That works more often than, than you would expect. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to try something here. Um, no guarantees this will work. I had a bit of a, um, a tussle with some car services over this last week because there were some people we wanted to send um, cars for at airports. And you know what? It's, it's really kind of weird. When, if you want to pay uh, to have somebody picked up at an airport, you can't really do it. You have, to, you have to have the credit card on you when you get dropped off. And that's very hard if you're paying for somebody else. And we were trying to ask them, well, how, how is it possible to actually pay for somebody if you don't have a big corporate account? Like, well, the person has to have the credit card on them. It's, it's just a whole big thing when people wound up taking taxis. Um, so, yeah, our, our first thing is with the car service. But in order to get the information for the car service, uh, we have to get information from an airline. What I'm going to try to do first, well, this is easy because this is completely above the board. I just want to find out uh, all the flights coming into JFK tomorrow from Los Angeles, flight numbers. And um, I guess the biggest challenge here will be getting a human on the phone. Let's see how hard it is to do that. You have to sort of um, scream representative at some point, and I might have to do that. Well, JetBlue fl Flight 198 gets in at 10 o'clock from Vegas. No, yeah, from Vegas, you could use that one. Well, that's handy information. But I figure, mm -hmm. I figure American Airlines has more flights getting in from LA tomorrow, so I'll be able to, to use that as part of my ruse. Um, but um, before I pick up this phone, I don't want to deafen anybody, so are there rules? Ready. Well, what do I do? I just pick up and uh, when you want to talk, press, the thing. I press the thing when I want to talk and release it and then it's muted. So I can insult them and they won't hear me. All right. All right, do we have a dial tone? Okay, and I'm going to... Now you can... Now you can hear me. Now you can. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call American Airlines. American Airlines. Para español, diga español. <laughs> Main menu. Please say reservations, flight and gate information, advantage services. I watch them try to convince me not to talk to a representative. Representative. I understand you'd like to speak to someone. If you'd like to try again, please say reservations, flight and gate information. Representative. Okay, do you want to talk to an agent about travel within the United States, Puerto Rico, or the U.S.? Representative! <laughs> Our agents are helping other customers right now, but I'll connect you to the next available agent. Your wait should be approximately four minutes. Oh, this please. call may be recorded. Please note that ticketing and checked baggage fees may apply. Check AA.com or with your reservations representative for details. I know why they're called AA. Um, do we want to tell stories while we um, wait, Flight or do we want to and departure information is skip over this and just go directly, directly to the car service? You know, at 1-800-242-4444. You know, we all have or stories on our website of, at AA.com. Uh, can anybody hear me? There it goes. All right. You know, just as much as we have stories, you know, that are hilarious that we've gotten away with, I mean, sometimes. Sorry, I thought it was a human. It wasn't. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, things go bad, especially when you're starting and learning the trade. Um, you know, some of my friends down here, they, they know the story. <laughs> um, you know, one, uh, one night, you know, I would think I was about 12 or 13 years old. Um, somebody said, you know, I bet you can't get the social security number of somebody. Yes, malicious, 12 years old, you know, trying to do whatever I can. Um, so I call up somebody pretending to be the local, was it the electric company, which is DPNL where I live. Um, and as it turned out, uh, it ended up being a lot later than I thought it was. So it was probably about 10:30, 11 o'clock at night. Big mistake. Um, the people uh, somehow they did a, a police trace on the phone. Um, about three or four days later, I got a, a call from a police substation um, asking to speak with my parents. When I told them I was 13, I said, uh, "You know, no, thank you," and hung up. They called back. Hung up called back, hung up, cell phone, and they tried this for about a week trying to get a hold of us. And uh, you know, the fact is that all you have to do is, if you're on a cell phone, hang up, and nobody can do anything to you. So we all get caught sometimes, and it's not the end of the world. Uh, when talking about um, being backstage with a clipboard, uh, I went to a Smothers Brothers concert with uh, Pat Paulson about two hours before the performance, maybe three, with a buddy of mine, and I had such a clipboard. Uh, we were walking down a downstairs corridor through uh, around by the uh, dressing rooms, 
And I could see coming towards us a gentleman with a camera, and behind him was a guard. So the fellow comes up, and I say to him, hi, I guess you're not supposed to be here either. Let's step into this dressing room. Um, I then take the little notebook I had on my clipboard, handed it to my buddy, told the other fellow, start playing with your camera, and I start writing on my clipboard. The guard steps in. I look up and go, may I help you? <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 that's okay. And off he went. For the delay in answering your call. As a reminder, you may obtain flight arrival, departure, or gate information. We don't need to know this. <laughs> I'm going to give this about two more minutes, and I'm going to just jump to the next part because our, our time is valuable, and they don't seem to know that. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you in the middle of something, Treasure? Your call is important to us. Were you in the middle of something? Talking? Um, T telling a story? Sure. Which uh, story does. Do you really want to hear the story of how I got my area code again? Yeah. <laughs> I well, might have to interrupt. They, if I do this, that means they picked up. Okay. When they split the 407 area code around Orlando, Florida, I'm the fellow that went to the Public Service Commission hearing. Well, before the hearing, I first went up on the internet. And, um, well, I get to the hearing and I explain that we who live near Cape Canaveral, the countdown capital of the world, we'd kind of like area code 321. Oh, and by the way, here's some printout from the North American Number Plan Administration showing it's available. Well, the way I look at it, of course, is that I asked for it, they approved it, so it must be my area code, but I share. <laughs> However, I did save the best number for myself. I will admit it here to you all now. My phone number is 321 liftoff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I did have to email the president of Bell South Mobility at the time to get it. You see, I went down to the kiosk and I asked for the number 5438633, and she called the Melbourne office. And, well, um, it turns out that the boys in Melbourne told her that uh, the number, while not in use, according to the recording I heard, was uh, in the middle of a hundred group on a corporate rate, totally unavailable. Oh, okay. So I went home, got up on the internet, bellsomability.com, mm -hmm, about the company. Oh, Mark Fiedler's the president. That might be nice to know. But I don't have his email address. Let's look around a little more and, oh, the press room. Okay, let's look around here, and here's some press releases. Good. Ah, there it is. The email address of a publicity flag. First name, underscore, last name, at, thank you, compose to Mark underscore Fiedler at Dear Mr. Fiedler. Blah, 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 321, blah, 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 my area code, may I please have 5438633. So as of uh, October 1st, 1999, my phone number will be 321, liftoff. Send. Oh. Darn. It's now 6.30 p.m. on a Friday. I can't possibly hear from this guy until what? Monday, probably. More than likely, Tuesday. Sunday evening, you have new mail. Oh, sure, I'll get my people on it. <laughs> and that's how I got my number. All right, I'm going to give up on these people because... Uh, yes, hello? Yes. Hi, I've got a bit of a problem. Um, my wife uh, booked me on a ticket uh, from Los Angeles to JFK tomorrow, and uh, she neglected to tell me the time. Oh. Uh, and well, I was wondering if maybe you might, might be able to tell me the arrival times, because I have to talk to the limo company. This is just a whole big thing. Okay. How many different flights are there into JFK tomorrow from LA? Uh, from LA to JFK? Yeah. Okay, if you. Um do you have the approximate time of departing? Well, I'd like to arrive uh, in the afternoon at some point. Doesn't mean necessarily that's what she did, because sometimes she doesn't do exactly what I like. Uh, but um, yeah, that's another thing. Um, can, can you just tell me the ones that arrive in the afternoon? OK, we do have one uh, departing at 6.20 in the morning, arriving at 2.50 into JFK. Or we have one uh, departing at 7.45, arriving at 4.20 in the afternoon. Okay. Do you have flight numbers on those? Sure. Um, the first one is flight 118, 
The second one is flight 34, and if you uh, would like to give me a last name, I'd be able to look up and see uh, see if you're on one of those. Yeah, flights. Johnson is last name, first name Bob, but it might be under Robert. Her name is Hope, so I mean she might have booked it under that name. Okay, she would have had to book it under your name. Oh, I, yeah, well, I mean, sometimes what she does is she uses the credit card, which is under, I guess it doesn't matter because it, we use the same credit card number. First name is what? It should be Bob, Robert. Are you showing any Johnsons at all? Uh, yes, I am. I'm just checking out the flight now. Okay. So if, if Johnson wasn't such a common name, if say it was, um, oh I don't know, um, Clinton or something, we'd know that they were on that flight because um, it's an uncommon name and she just confirmed that there is a Johnson. I'm sorry, say that again? I don't see, see you on either one of the first two flights. Hey. Um, Check this one. Okay. connection? You know, I'm not even sure what time I'm arriving. It's possible that uh, she booked this in a, a completely weird way. I, oh, I just wish you had told me the name of the flight or the, the arrival time or something like that. I'm sorry I'd have to put you through all this because this is a communication problem in my own house. Um, the, the flight that has the Johnson on it, are you able to tell me the time well, of that there one? Well, there are quite a few flights with Johnsons on them. It's just not anything with Bob or Robert on them. Really? Um, We haven't even gotten to the limo company yet. This is. And she's really working hard for us right now, looking up all sorts of things. I think they have a bad cable. I don't think it's that cable, I think it's another one. It could be the long distance connection. Okay, at some point you have to cut your losses and just move on because things just take too long sometimes. Um, so I'm just going to basically see if I can get one more flight number out of her and move on. Still looking. There are a lot of flights from LA to JFK. Uh, could you just give me the next two, this 250, the 420, what are the two after that? I'll, I'll figure this out with that information. Okay, the 610 and the 724. Okay, and what are the flight numbers on those? Uh, the first one is 118, the second one is 34, the, the third one is 2, and the next one is 40. Did you say it was 2? Mm-hmm. Flight number 2. Okay, and what time did that one get in? Gets in at 6.10 in the evening. Okay, I'll figure this out. Thanks, thanks so much for your help. You're welcome, and thank you for flying American. No problem. Bye-bye. All right. Um, we didn't, I mean, this is all public information, but we did get her to, um, to confirm that people with this name are on certain flights. If I had pushed a little deeper or gotten a more uncommon name, like I said, that we'd been able to, um, uh, to verify that somebody was on a particular flight. If you knew that somebody was traveling from Los Angeles to New York on a particular day using a particular airline, you could narrow it down that way. Not the most amazing information in the world, but with somebody who's a little more trusting, if you gain their trust, uh, then they'll keep giving you information. They'll give you um, um, all sorts of frequent flyer numbers. They'll give you uh, a, an address, perhaps, an email address, a phone number. It's all possible. Okay, so now we have, we, we have some um, flight arrival times. Uh, I'm going to call the limo company now. Now, these people, they may not tolerate any of this because they're always in a hurry and they're always kind of short on the phone. So um, 
it's going to be tricky to get anything out of them. But let's give it a shot. You know, one thing with social engineering, you can't be afraid to take a chance and always have a way to back out if you have to. Um, okay, let's go. Thank you for calling Dial 7 Car and Limousine. Your call may be recorded or monitored for quality assurance purposes. Yeah. If you have just arrived at the airport and are ready to be picked up, please press 1. Please hold. Thank you for calling Dial 7. This is Priscilla Seek. Can I help you? Yeah, hi. I got a real problem here. My wife booked me uh, to get picked up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, she neglected to tell me uh, what, what time I'm supposed to be picked up. Uh, my last name is Johnson. And you have a reservation already? Uh, well, that's it. I don't have the reservation number. That's the problem. I'm, okay. I, let me get the, the first three letters of your last name. Okay. J-O-H. J-O-H. I'm coming into JFK from Los Angeles. And, w and what's your full name, sir? Uh, full name is Johnson, J-O-H. First name? First name is Robert or Bob, but the thing is she might have booked it under her name, which is Hope. Okay, hold on one second. If you see any Johnsons there, it, it, it's very likely it might be that. Let me see. No, I don't see it under your name. Probably she has it under her name. What's her last name? Uh, her la well, actually, her maiden name is Brown. Do you think maybe she booked it under that name? Probably. Or? Let's check. All right. <laughs> And what's her name? Her first name is Hope, but Hope? she uh, Hope H O P E. Okay. But uh, I mean, she's been known to go by different names too. I mean, if you see that, if you see a brown there, that's quite possible that uh, it's her. No, I do not see a Hope Brown. I see a lot of Browns, but it's not Hope. Do you see any Browns with female names? Um, let me see, let me see. Cara Brown, my God, Sarah Brown. Wait, I'm sorry, did you say Sarah? Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, well, no, Sarah's, Sarah, Sarah's her middle name. She used that, she was an actress at one point. She did use that occasionally for stage. So I don't know why she was and looking at that And what airport you was coming in? Into JFK. JFK? Yeah. Because I see a pickup at, uh, in Manhattan going to JFK. I don't think that one's it. Well, if you knew Hope, uh, that's entirely possible. She got it wrong. She got it backwards. And, and, and um, what's her cell phone number? Uh, the 917 number? Um, uh, no, it's not. I don't see a 917. No. I see a different number. Hold on. Let me try another way. Okay, yeah. Um, do you know any other name? Like. Well, maybe it's a different Sarah Brown, I guess. It's yeah, possible. Yeah, it's, it's a different Sarah Brown. Y okay. Let me just try to see. That's, that's an odd coincidence. Hold on one second. And she made a reservation to pick you up at JFK. Uh, yeah, that's what she told me. She oh, said okay, that. Let yeah, me see. I'm, I'm on the. I'm on the. Um, well, I was either going to be on the 420 or the 610, which is uh, flight 34 or flight mm -hmm. two on American Airlines. It's Does that not help? coming. It's not coming out on that name. Maybe. Um, wow! 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 Well, you, how many people are you picking up on the 420? Maybe that'll help. The 420. Yeah. I don't really. Hold on one second. Okay. Let me see something. Because the only thing I can tell you is I can either have the confirmation number, the pickup date, or the pickup time. Um, let me see the passenger's name, the car, and the dispatch zone. That's all I can really get information out of. I can't really put in a number or anything. I see. Um, okay, so um, so basically you're telling me that uh, there are a number... Are there, did you say there were Johnsons on the 420? Johnsons? Let me find out Thank again. You. Hold on. She basically told me she couldn't do it, and now I told her she could, and she's kind of going back and doing it anyway. Yeah, I got a lot of Johnsons, but I don't see no pickup in, uh, in, in JFK. Oh, before the 610 either? Mm-mm. No, but I don't see. Okay. Oh, you know what? She's pulling up now. In the okay, you know, I'll, I'm going to settle this. Okay, right no problem. <laughs> Thanks so much for all your help. Don't worry about it. You'll all be right. fine. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. All right.
we, we didn't really accomplish anything, but we got her to totally believe our story and become sympathetic and all that. And that's 90% of it right there. You get people on your side. You tell a, a ridiculous story about how your wife messed something up. And, you know, they'll be on your side giving advice even and sympathy and all that. And you'll just have a good feeling that, wow, they really care, even though you don't really exist in that form. <laughs> Again. All right. I, I have more, but let me rest. Uh, tell, tell a story or something. You wanted me yeah, to look up something else. Another method is, uh, well, not a method, but uh, you ask for innocuous information from that lady, like stuff that she would normally, like a reservation number. And you ask several questions of innocuous information, and then when you go to the sensitive information, usually they'll give that up to you because they're already in that pattern of giving out information. Mm. So you get a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Usually works. Yes, it does. Does anybody else want to try something? I don't want to hog the phone. Maybe huh? I can tell a story about Sid. Tell a story about Sid. Yes, go ahead. Well, he's uh, worked his way into uh, quite a few different situations, but some of the simple ones, like, uh, for instance, getting uh, him into DEF CON many years ago, that was kind of hard at first, but that was the first year he met, uh, met Kevin Mitnick, and then the second year he saw Kevin Mitnick, he remembered my dog, but he didn't remember me. And he, yeah. I, the first year you met him, you pat him a while and you talk with him, and the second year, my dog, Sid. Sid. Oh, no, I don't you remember. You don't remember him? No. No, man. Now, the second year you saw him, you asked me if, if, uh, if I brought him the first year. And so... Are you sure it was me? Yeah, of course it was you. <laughs> okay. My brain cells must be dying. Well, it was a big deal a long time ago when uh, DEF CON was at Alexis Park. I mean, we had to get uh, the hotel manager involved and the DEF CON security staff involved. And eventually he was allowed. And then years after that, he was allowed. It was easy to get him in after that. But he's helped me get out of speeding tickets. He's been in central offices. I take, take pictures of him wherever I can get him in. And so and he's a good lubricant for any social situation, pretty much uh, put anyone in a good mood. So if you're having trouble talking to him or getting, getting past anything, he kind of helps out a little bit. So. All right, I guess I gotta try something else. Um, okay, well down in the lobby, uh, T Profit gave me this idea. I don't know. Seems a little bit risky to me, but basically what we're gonna do is try and call one of the ritzier hotels in town and see if maybe we can get them to admit they have bed bugs. <laughs> this doesn't work, don't blame me. It, I, it wasn't my idea, but... Um, okay, let's pick a hotel. I have a few ritzy ones here. Um, Closet. Yeah, I don't have that one, but... Uh, sorry? I do not want Donald Trump on my bad side. <laughs> I have enough problems. I have the Ritz-Carlton. You know what? I'm going to call the Ritz-Carlton. All right. No idea what I'm going to say. Good evening, and thank you for calling Ritz-Carlton, New York Central. Uh, yeah, I'm going from the last top exterminators. Uh, I was given uh, the number to to, uh, to make the delivery tomorrow, and we need the uh, the contact. Alexa, can I get a call, sir, towards security entrance, please? I'm sorry. Alexa, can I get a call, sir, towards security entrance for the delivery? Okay. Well, we need to do the extermination tomorrow. This is for the bed bugs. For the bed bugs? Yes. For Ritz Carlton Hotel? That's what. Yeah, we. Uh, this is the order form that we got. We actually received this uh, yesterday, and that was uh, for Sunday morning. One moment, please. Thank you. <laughs> At the very least, we know we're causing a stir. Good evening. Thank you for calling Rich Calm Security. This is Jonathan. How may I assist you? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm talking to the right person. I'm from Last Hope Exterminators. Uh, we were told to uh, show up tomorrow morning, and uh, we, we don't have a contact. That's the problem. Okay. What time are you guys supposed to show up? We're supposed to show up at 10. PM? No, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yeah, this is for this is for the bed bugs. Okay. Uh, can I just place on a brief hold? Yeah, please. Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping he'd say that. You all heard the name of the exterminators, right? All right. It's a good name for an exterminator.
One thing to remember when you're doing social engineering, a lot of time is just spent waiting, <laughs> listening to silence and sometimes static on the phone. But it pays off in the end, lots of times. Yes. Uh, wh what location are you trying to get in contact with? Uh, what location? In Manhattan, Ritz Carlton. Okay. Do you know if it's Central Park or Battery Park? Uh, Central Park. Central Park. Yeah. Okay. The gentleman that you would have to get into contact with, or that would be the contact, is our director of engineering. Uh -huh. I'm going to see if I can send him an email. All right, would you? Um, yeah, I'll definitely do that. And then, is there a number that I can call you back? Uh, well, the office is closed right now. I'm actually calling you from my cell phone. Okay. Um, I, you know what? Um, if you um, call the 718 number and leave him, you know, but I can't figure out that answering machine. Uh, what time will you get a response from well, him? Well, I'll email him now, okay. and hopefully I could get a response within the next half hour, which I'm sure I probably could. All right, would you do that, and then we can, I can call you back, and then we can find out what time to come in tomorrow for this, because we we're supposed to do it quickly. Or that's what he told us. Okay. All right. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Right, oh, wait, wait, sir. Yeah, yeah. What company are you with? Uh, Last Hope Exterminators. Last Hope. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I think we can safely say if there's another hope, it's not going to be at the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> we will not be welcome there. And thanks, T. Profit, for that. That was good. That was good. It worked out. How much time do we have? Maybe we can take some questions, and we'll try one more before... The uh, microphone is in the middle, if anybody wants to walk up and just ask. Or share stories, too, if you guys have any... The social engineering stories of your own, we'd sure like to hear them, get some inspiration. I actually got a call on Thursday morning from what I later found out to be a uh, series of scammers that have been pretty well circulating around the internet, calling all over the country, trying to separate people from their money. Would you like their phone number? <laughs> <laughs> you can give it to us, but I wouldn't give it to us with all these people because, you know, if you... Oh no, they're scammers. They're, well, I mean, you say they're scammers, but they're probably uh, investment bankers and they're... This is true. <laughs> but definitely share it, send us an email or hand it to us and we can look into them. And uh, Lots of times what happens... Well, do you want to call them now? Uh, you type a phone number into uh, Google and you get all these stories of people that have had the same thing happen to them. And uh, it's, it's incredible what you can learn from a company. Always, whenever you do business with somebody you don't know, type in their name, type in their phone number, see if other people have had experiences with them. If you get a telemarketing call from some weird place you don't think is, is quite right, Use Google and find out all kinds of other things about them, what other people have experienced. But uh, definitely do your research before giving out any information. Okay, second on this line. We have two microphones, but first we're going to have, we have more people on this one. We'll I go just, to that one next. I'd go. just like you to make that call in about a half hour, call that guy back. I'm sorry? I'd like you to call that guy back in a half an hour at the Ritz-Carlton. Yeah, but I'll be on my cell phone then, really. <laughs> all right, in the back. Uh, yeah, just uh, sharing a general story. Uh, or even like just a general recommendation. Uh, the easiest way is to find like common ground, for example, I'm um, Puerto Rican, so if I see a Latin American, you, that common ground, you start speaking into Spanish, and they open up a whole lot that they wouldn't have opened open up previously. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the other way I was in uh, Subway, uh, and the previous customer was just giving them a lot of shit. So, but, you know, sometimes you can tell, you can, you can tell, like, I know this guy speaks Spanish. So the guy leaves, I tried talking to him, like, you know, wow, he was giving you a lot of shit in Spanish. And uh, without me noticing, I take my stuff, and I notice that he had put two extra cookies for me. So, you know, I don't know if that exactly counts, but that was totally a win for me. You, you can get very far by using a very thick accent. It doesn't even have to be an existing language, but you just... <laughs> you just talk so slowly and get all these words wrong and they, they, will, they will do whatever they can to get you off the phone. They'll tell you their, their address, their phone number. Just, just, you know, because sometimes these representatives, they, they, they're really like slaves. They, they can't even hang up. They, they have the headsets attached to their head and they don't even have a hang up button. They have to wait for the customer to hang up before they get connected to the next call. It's, it's pathetic. Also, a technique, when you're talking to somebody on the phone that you really don't want to talk to, hang up while you're talking. That must have been accidental. <laughs> okay, right, next thanks. question in the front. Uh, I don't know if anyone here is from Jacksonville, Florida. 
Um, but there's a radio station, and this is all over the rural south, you'll find these. They're call-in bargain radio stations. And they'll say their phone number over the air, it's usually an FM band a little bit below the commercial band between the religious stations. And you, they will have buyer's numbers. So you can call this, say, the station, say, they say, they'll answer you and you're on the air immediately. And, and they'll say, hello, what do you want? This is WJXR. And then you say, hi, I'm buyer number 806JV. I'd like 50 truckloads of uh, Purina dog chow delivered to my house. And they'll usually put it in the system under whoever's buyer numbers that is. And you can usually figure out the buyer number just by listening to two or three of them. And then you've got about 30 seconds on the air to say whatever you want before they chop you off. <laughs> so look these stations up. One of them's in Jack's called WJXR. You, you have an evil mind, sir. But <laughs> you're, you're welcome here. Next in this line. Um, I'm wondering if, if you think you could, if you could, uh, I know you don't know the airline, but you could probably see if you could get Sarah Brown's uh, flight number, because you know when right. she's getting into... Everybody, please leave Sarah Brown alone. <laughs> <laughs> she just has to get to the airport tomorrow to get wherever the hell she's going. Let her do that in peace, but suggestion noted. One more here, then we'll get to Rebel, who's filming his question. Go ahead. I got a bit of a story here with uh, social engineering. Uh, a friend of mine and I uh, were actually spinning up, staying up late at night, and we actually just got a random pop-up uh, instant message from one of those, uh, hey, we're going to send you a bunch of money orders, you cash them and send them off to Britain. Uh, well, the thing is, a friend of mine, he's actually in the security and fraud department for PayPal. So we're actually just sitting there thinking, all right, how can we screw with this person? What we did actually is we pulled up a random name generator for to get a, a bunch of different people's names. Then we got the list of all the state departments for the FBI. <laughs> we then proceeded to say, okay. <laughs> Go on, dig yourself in deeper. <laughs> We proceeded to say that yes, we're John Smith at State Office of FBI in Nevada. They said, "Oh, okay, yeah." So we can go. Yeah, we'll be we'll be right here. We'll go ahead and cash those money orders for you. Ship them off to Britain for you, no problem. Oh, by the way, we have about eight or nine other friends that we want to go ahead and just send you information because they want to go ahead and do that too. Sorry, this and. Uh, it got to the point where we were actually just in mid-conversation getting to start to like where she was actually getting friendly with us and all this type of thing and she was like, well I gotta go now because I'm gonna go ahead and just take a shower and we'll talk to you later and we're like, uh, right, whatever, we'll uh, see if we can hear you in the news about this later. <laughs> Rebel in the back, go ahead, make it quick. Yes, I'd like to mention, social engineering, you, um, everybody knows about telemarketing you, they, it's annoying when they call you and then they call you with numbers that they spoof the caller ID and when they spoof the caller ID, they, when you try and call it back, it's a disconnected number or a number that you can't call. What I do is I had to change my number. That wasn't the reason I changed my number, but I changed my number. They had the nerve, because my phone number is listed in the phone book, they have the nerve to look up my phone number, look up my name, and call the new number. Now guess what I have to do? Thanks to you, Emmanuel, I learned this from you change my last name in the directory and you could do this without a charge you don't have to pay that unlisted you know because you got to pay usually to get your name unlisted first name remains the same the last name you change so in other words now when they try and look up your name ah oh, well it's not listed so hopefully this whole marketing will stop so that you guys you got to basically know how to social engineer people know how to to to, to do these kind of okay thank you um, now, uh, our, technically our time is up, Kevin is up next, sure. we, we're going to sort of seg into him, so we'll, we'll take one or two more, we really can't take more than that, so if you're not right in front of a microphone right now, uh, we're not going to have time, sorry, uh, but Kevin is up next, let's take this question here. All right, um, I just had a short story that kind of has some useful advice. Um, I'm Deviant, you may have seen me with Tool doing the lockpick stuff. One of the things we give out as crazy prizes for some of our contests in various cons are these, we call them penetration tester kits. They're actually like field technician shirts, like, you know, the polo with the embroidered like Verizon and Comcast logo and fire services logo. 
for a while, I just started trying to email companies and call companies saying, do you, oh, you, I see you do digitized embroidery. Can, can you do this? And you'd always get, no, those are, we can't do that for you unless you can send us your letterhead. And you could have, you know, gone that route, obviously. But I said, well, there's got to be an easier way to make these friggin' shirts. So I just started looking for the smallest home business embroidery. Like, I think I looked on Craigslist. And I found some lady right in the town next door. And I sent this email. Theater, if you, even if you're not with a theater group, pretending you're in theater allows you to do a lot of stuff. Like, oh, these are fake weapons. I can transport them into this part of the city because we're doing a production. I can smoke on this stage because this is a theater show. I said to this lady, I said, I don't know if you can help. Uh, it's kind of a rush job, but we'll pay you extra. We're doing a musical review about uh, the, the problems and plagues of the telecom industry called Can You Hear Me Now? <laughs> and it should be really fun. And the last, last scene, uh, it's this amazing, like, this kick line that comes down through the audience with people in all these different corporate shirts. We're going to need, like, a hundred, like, Comcast and Verizon. Like, I have the artwork all PSD'd. Can you just digitize and embroider this? And I got this email back. She's like, that sounds fascinating. Where is that going up? And I was like, oh, I'll set tickets aside for you if you'd like to come. So that's how, like, I have all these Verizon shirts and Comcast shirts. And so, yeah. That, that is brilliant. That is Thank brilliant. you. The thing is to get people enthused and on your side, and that's, that's the trick. And also, you know, you mentioned letterheads, and that's something that I've, I've always been amazed by, especially like with clowns like Network Solutions. All you got to do, they, they, well, yeah, you know, our site got redirected to gay porn last year, and that was because somebody faked a letterhead. How, I mean, they asked for your letterhead as verification. What, do they have a file of everybody's letterhead in the world? How do, how do they know what your letterhead looks like? You just make something up and that's it. You can do it in, in, in two minutes. And somehow that's proof of your identity. It's, it's, it's insane. Okay, we only have time for the one question in the back. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, this is a story as well. Um, sometimes the guy doing the social engineering won't actually be the guy who's benefiting from it. Uh, one time my dad and I went for movies. Guy ahead of us, movie was delayed, flipped out, went crazy, yelled at this lady, stormed out. And the lady just gave us four free tickets just because that guy had freaked out. And my dad was a middle-aged guy, too. So in order to avoid another middle-aged guy freaking out, they gave us twice as many tickets that we, than we had originally paid for. And we got to see the original movie. Awesome. <laughs> no, I, I was listening. Um, we're just going to give the people up here a chance to say one last thing. Actually, I just would like to quickly say, uh, since we don't have time to do it, um, but this would have been a good one. Uh, we have a list of Starbucks that are closing. Apparently, having millions of stores, they have to like downsize a little bit. Yeah, yeah it happens. But we were going to call them representing the Last Hope Foundation. Um, uh, what we are, what we are, no, we don't have time. We, we're, we're, we're a company uh, that makes donations to employees affected by downsizing, and uh, we, uh, well, it's, we're trying to be nice here. And we, and we'll, we want to send a check, but we just need the employee list, fax to us, you know. <laughs> With the social security numbers for tax purposes. No, we're not. We don't have time. Kevin's going to get mad. I do not want Kevin Mitnick on my bad side. All right. All right. Okay. Will it be Ohio or will it be California? Ohio. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Say it's popular. Ohio, Ohio it I told is. you. All right. I hope they're open. Phone about to be picked up. All right. You guys got to be quiet. It's very hard to explain a thousand laughing people to somebody on the phone. <laughs> you know, the TV can only be so loud in the background. All right. Here we go. Okay. Now we know their whole phone number. Great. I don't think they're there. Oh, great. <laughs> Hello? Hello? There's nobody there. Okay, let's call California then.
calling Hollister Starbucks. This is Andrea speaking. How may I help you? Uh, yes, this is Mr. Goldstein from the Last Hope Foundation. I, call, I spoke to somebody earlier. Uh, we're the organization that makes donations to uh, the employees affected by downsizing. You're the 1280 San Juan Street Starbucks? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I'm calling from the Last Hope Foundation. Did you get, um, did someone speak to you about this? Um, no, I have not been talked to, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, we called earlier. We're the organization that makes, it, your store is, is set to be closed, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, we make donations uh, to employees. We're a national organization and we're funded by PayPal and various other methods. What we do is we make donations to the employees that are affected by these downsizings uh, throughout the, uh, the nation. There's uh, your double talk with each other. Sorry. Go also, ahead. Yeah, so basically we just needed the facts sent to us of the employee names. Oh, um, okay. okay. Well, do you need our fax number? Um, I can take that from you, but okay. I, can't, I can't do anything about that. It would have to be my manager. Okay, well, if you could just say that you talked to me and that this is uh, something that uh, we need to have processed by Monday in order to get the check out. Last Hope, you said? The Last Hope Foundation. Have you never heard of us? No. When a store, when a store is downsized, what we do is we, we take up collections for the employees who are terminated. And then depending on the amount of, um, of, of the donations, we send checks to either the entire store or to each individual employees. In your case, it would probably amount to about $75 each. Not very much, but it's something. And yeah. uh, we represent the national organization that, that helps people that are being downsized. And unfortunately, that's what's happening to you right now. Um, so um, I, I, I talked to somebody at length before. I thought that you would have gotten the information and they could send the facts now. Um, oh, okay. Well, I don't, I like, I can't, um, what's the word? Like, I, I have no authorization to like send all that stuff out. Because from what I knew was mm -hmm. that our employees were they had the option of going to different stores, and if we couldn't find something for them, um, they, I can't remember, but I don't know anything about this because I'm not from this store. You're, you're not from the store that you're in? No. I'm from a different store. I'm covering a shift. Okay. You, you wouldn't be covered. You realize that? No. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm just no. saying I don't want you to be disappointed. No, no, no. I know. I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not from this store. Like, my store is not shutting down. I'm from a different store. Some, one of their employees got sick, so I came in for them. You see? I see. No, that, that might explain why you didn't get the message then. Yes. Okay. So, and what is your name? Andrea. Andrea? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, I, if you were one of the people that was affected, I could take your name now and uh, actually you'd be on the list. But since you're not from the store, I'm afraid I can't do that. No, yeah. I, my, store's, my, my store's not shutting down. I'm right. fine. But if it does shut down... But yeah, eventually you will probably get a call from one of our representatives, and then you, all I, you would have I, to do. That's, I understand. That's, it makes sense. Good. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. <laughs> Closing words, it makes sense. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Kevin's up next. <laughs>